Hey everybody, we are back in the shop. It is Friday, I've got a busy weekend planned. In this video, I'm going to be routing a chamfer on this trim, installing my trim, wire brushing my trim, and hopefully priming my trim, as well as possibly a little bit of interior framing. I've run all the chamfers on my trim pieces. These ones need an angle cut on the top. They're going for the top of the camper. First, we really need to talk about something, everyone. Why does it look like someone smeared poop on my camper? Well, well, I had done all this with almond cock, caulking. C-A-U-L-K-I-N-G. As you can see, it's a lot neater. Ah, uh, but I ran out of almond and I had some brown and I tried to do a really heavy bead because I wanted extra water sealing protection, but it didn't look very neat and I tried to kind of smooth it out, but there's so much of it that it was quite smeary and I'm just wiping it off with a rag. Ah, uh, so it's still kind of smeary. So I smoothed it out so you can still see the texture. And once it's all painted, I don't think it's gonna show. But anyway, I am wire brushing all this trim for some texture. And then I'm going to actually take painter's tape and tape it off nicely and make a nice big bead of caulk. So for us sealing up as, to seal it up as best I can. This is very embarrassing. I didn't really wanna show this, but uh, it is the reality of what's going on and we're gonna fix it and you're never gonna know unless you watch this video, which I thank you for watching this video, by the way. I hope you're enjoying it. So first thing to do, I was going to do these pieces after uh, this cardboard can actually represent my roof panels that will be coming down, they'll be overhanging. They'll be thicker than this, obviously, but. <clears throat> so I was going to take my trim and just butt it up here tight and then caulk that seam. But I thought it might actually be hard to get fasteners in there and I can't really wire brush it and painting will be more of a problem. So I'm going to cut a slight angle to match this and get these attached first. Once I get those on, once I get those on, I can start uh, the underwing area here or the under, under cab or cab over area, under the cab over and the underwing sections as well as these parts in the rear. Uh, these ones I'm going to cut, but I'm not sure because of my door frame. These ones I'm not going to attach just yet because I'm not exactly sure how wide my door frame is gonna be. So these will probably have to be trimmed. I'm just using a sliding T-bevel here to find this angle. I'll use that to set my blade angle. We'll just lower the blade down a little bit, set our fence. And we'll just rip these pieces with an angle on one edge. Here I'm just tacking on a scrap of wood to act as a reference or a stop for my molding to butt up against. Just put them on with a couple of brad nails by hand so I can easily pop it off and reuse it. I've got to reposition it a couple times. And then I'm just test fitting my piece and marking it for length. Apparently I was not happy and decided to check it again. Let's trim that up on the saw. And we're just going to check the fit and make sure it's not too loose, not too tight. And then we're just applying some polyurethane construction adhesive. Ah, 
and I did not film this part, but I put a little bead of caulk where these uh, ends butt into the existing molding. And I'm just going to attach them with 18 gauge inch and a half brad nails. Uh, this is the procedure for pretty much every piece of molding. Cut it, fit it, caulk it, glue it, nail it. So I have a scrap piece here of my molding, as well as the spacer I used to set the molding already on the side of the camper. I'm using these to help strike a line so I can uh, measure the long points of my miters, cut them all to length. It's a handy little reference. You could just measure them, but sort of gives you a visual reference to where your pieces are actually going to land. And here's a closer look. Getting ready to do the underside of the cab over. This is actually caulking. Just gonna hit the ends where this piece is gonna butt in and then run the one long edge. So here you can see me applying some green tape before I drive my fasteners. This technique actually does work very well on some porous woods like oak, depending what filler you're using. In the end, it ended up being more trouble than it was worth, and I abandoned this process. So if you see any green tape, just ignore it. I ended up peeling it all off and uh, not using it, which is fine, just a little bit more sanding in the end. So I made some marks, my spacer to represent where these pieces are gonna land. I've still gotta cut the butt end here. So I'm not sure if I showed this on the other side, so I'm gonna show it on this side. I've done the front already. I'm just going to basically line up with my existing marks. Ignore this miter line. I don't know if that's the exact center. I just struck a line there, but this point here is what we're concentrating on. So we'll line that up there at the point. I just want to take my spacer, make sure going to be covering our other pieces and I'm just going to make a little mark here lining up with the edge of this. So now I'm trying to hold this here. Back in position. Like that. So these are actually sitting pretty good. Okay, so I can trim off these, uh, the square end, the other side here, because my door frame, I'm not sure, going for editing, uh, my door frame, I'm not sure how far it's going to come over, so I'm going to cut these pieces, I'm not going to attach them, you know, leave them till later, till they figure this all out, because they're probably going to be needed. Uh, to be trimmed down a little bit narrower on this vertical part anyway. So these we can fit and cut. First I'm going to go cut these and double check them. This side looks good. So these two pieces are good. I'm going to put my green tape on them, a glue on the back side, caulk my adjoining budding piece, uh, put my caulk just on this section where it's budding in, and then we can attach these. So we don't want to have it too messy. Right where this butts in, I'm just going to add a bead of caulk. Line 
line this one up at the bottom. on this mitre. Oh, we're happy. Okay, so I'm putting on So I've got this little cock finisher tool. So it works very well getting rid of your excess. And for internal caulking jobs for trim work, I really like it. But for this application, it's not going to be enough caulk remaining but it's my first application and then after I wire brush everything well fill the nail holes sand it and then wire brush it uh, I'm going to lay green tape and make a nice heavy bead but nice and neat this is kind of just to give it a first seal up and I just want to make sure I have no heavy ridges. Okay, well the very least part, the underwings, is now done. Thank goodness. At least the pieces are all attached. I still have to fill all the nail holes and do some sanding and some wire brushing. I'll tell you, getting up and down probably like 50 times at least. M measuring and marking and caulking and then gluing and nailing and oh. It was a chore, man. I wish I had my jacks on, I could just jack this thing up and then I could at least sit on a bucket or something. I had planned on getting a little bit of framing done. Uh, the water storage area, that's also like a bench seat. And I was gonna maybe start laying out my kitchen counter in areas, figuring out my closet. But it is getting a little bit late today, so I'm probably gonna have to skip that and get that done maybe this week, if not next weekend. I'm trying to focus on the exterior and get it ready. Uh, once I get these nail holes filled and this wire brushed up, then I can prime and get this whole thing painted before I put the roof on. I'll make it a lot easier. Another thing that I've been discovering is that it's going to be over 80 inches wide and I am going to need marker lights up in the corners in the back. So I'm trying to find some low key ones that are gonna blend in with my rustic gypsy Vardo style. Anyway, I did find some small round ones online. They were like three quarters inch. They were like about three quarters of an inch in diameter. So they might work. And they were looked like they were smoky. They're amber when they're lit up, but they're like smoky dark glass when they're not. I don't know. We'll have to see what they look like in real life, but I'll find something cool. So I think I'm gonna call that the end of this video. I'm gonna spend a bit of time here filling my nail holes. So I really appreciate everyone that follows along. I'm glad you're enjoying it.